Hey guys, welcome back, Fast Monty's Garage. Today, we're gonna troubleshoot why my Phytech system isn't starting very fast. Now, when I first put it in, those of you guys know, I was raving about how easy it was to start the car. Well, since doing that playlist, I rebuilt the engine, and my first fire episode, if you guys remember, I was struggling to get the car, the engine started for the first time. I didn't know if it was a setting, or what so I was only worried about firing the engine well that problem persisted and ironically I ran into a bunch of the five tech guys at a good guy show uh, so Bryce and Jeremy in particular thank you so much for for chatting with me about my issue they basically said I might have an issue with my 12 volt keyed on power now those of you that are in the middle of my playlist this is an addendum so I'm going to put this video in the playlist right after the wiring to keep this in mind because when I pulled the engine I don't know if I maybe tweak the wire harness and something's not working quite right or I just don't have enough power on that electric choke electric choke signal wire so Today, we're going to go through the troubleshooting process and fix that issue. So we're going to jump in the car. I'll show you the symptoms I have now, why it's not starting. And then we'll take our handheld unit, the Phytech handheld unit, and show you how we could diagnose it from there. And then we'll fix it. Be right back. All right, guys. So I'm keyed on. I haven't done anything yet, but I have fuel pressure from a new gauges we just recently put in. And here's what happened. So this is the first attempt to turn the engine over. Notice it just cranks and cranks, so it probably takes me two or three times to do this. And it starts to sputter. I'll even key off again. I can hear it's the throttle body squirt. And then it finally starts. Now, it should be starting faster. The reason that's happening, the, the unit is powering the distributor, so the distributor has power. There's enough squirt going on from the throttle body, so that was three squirts. It got enough fuel to kick the engine, and then the throttle body, the uh, computer caught up to it. So let's go ahead and put the handheld unit, I'll attach the handheld unit, and see how the handheld unit behaves. All right, so on your handheld unit, on the main menu, you go to your dashboard. On your dashboard, that top line is RPM. Now when we crank, there should be a value there. If there's no value there, that means we have a problem with the 12 volt keyed power. Let's try that. All right, so did you guys notice that that value did not start until the engine actually started? that value should have a value when it's cranking because there is RPM going on. So that is the telltale sign. And what we'll do now is I'm going to go ahead and take a look at what uh, wire we powered to get the voltmeter out and check it out. All right, a little refresher for those of you that are not following on the playlist. Instructions, we're looking for the white wire. So the white wire is the power connection to switch. So I'm going to get under the hood figure out where our four pin connector is and see if we can get my voltmeter on that wire and do some testing. All right, I found the four pin connector and there's our white wire that we are going to test. And there are some pins in there. So I'm going to go ahead and get uh, one of my jumpers, this little guy, and connect to the white wire. And now I can use my voltmeter and run it to the cabin because we have to turn the key, watch the voltmeter. And while we're here, I also took off the power lead that goes to the distributor. There's a distributor right here. So that way we can crank the engine without it firing and we can watch the behavior, see what kind of power is on here. So let's go ahead and jump in the, in the cab and uh, see what happens. All right, here we go. So I got the voltmeter obviously on and we're going to turn the key. Oh, we got juice when we turn the key. Now let's see what happens when we crank. I'm really curious about this. Oh my gosh, look at that. No power when cranking. 
How crazy. No wonder it's not working right. Oh, man. All right. I got to do some noodling. Um, maybe we tap into the power lead on the distributor. All right. I'm going to rehook up the jumpers and we'll give that a test. All right. I added the jumper to that uh, power line to the distributor. Obviously, it's still not hooked up to the distributor. So key on. 13.5. And let's see what happens. Oh, sweetness. Let's try it again. Over 9 volts. Nice. I think I was talking to uh, Jeremy or Bryce with Fitech and they said you need at least 7 volts during cranking. So I'm going to go ahead and trace that wire back to the fuse panel and see if we can tap in there. Man, this is crazy. You guys remember when I had to rewire the distributor wire to go to 10 gauge? So this one is here. And someone had asked, how do you get to that fuse back of the fuse panel? Well, there's a Phillips head screw back in there that you just unscrew that screw and this whole plug comes off on the firewall. Now our goal is I want to find where that white wire is connected. And one of you guys pointed out a trick on your voltmeter. There's a setting right here. It looks like a sound wave. It actually tests for connectivity. So all I do is connect to the white wire on the plug and then use the other end of the probe and it's this wire. So these little uh, connectors come out by pushing on this tab from the back side of that plug and then pulling the wire out. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this off here and I'm going to solder it onto this connection. So that way we're pulling juice right from the source and the distributor will be able to get as much power as it can through its 10 gauge and we need a tiny wire for the uh, white wire so I'll get that done put it back together meet you back in the car all right all spliced in let's do that white wire test again so key on and let's crank yes all right boys and girls it's game time we have everything connected and the engine is clearly dead cold uh, it's actually the next day and there's no fuel pressure obviously hasn't been running in a while and here's our dashboard so when we go to when i turn the key you're going to hear that annoying fuel pump i have which is going to be changed at a later date uh, there you see the fuel uh, pressure increase and then i'm going to hear the squirt of the throttle body it's actually doing a prime shot uh, we probably can't hear it over the microphone and then I'm going to key and then I'm going to crank. So because we fixed that problem, we should be seeing a value there for the RPM. I don't know how fast it's going to start now, but the, the true tail sign is an RPM. So let's watch for it. There we go. Key on. There's that awful pump noise. And here's the value. Let's see what happens when we crank. Yes! That is awesome! Wow! That is fan-freaking-tastic! Did you guys see how there was a value there while it was cranking? That was... Oh my god, I'm so happy right now. Okay, so the... All right, this is pretty exciting. This is starts way faster than before, and now that it's, it's dawning on me, sometimes I crank the car four or five times before it catches. Now, the other issue I was having is starting the car when it's hot or warm. Like, if I go to the gas station, I fill up. Sometimes it takes me forever to start the car. So I think we solved that problem. So I'm going to go ahead and get the car up to temperature, and we'll see how fast it starts at that point. Be right back. I'm at 200 degrees and fuel pressure is still there, of course. So I waited about five, 10 minutes and let's see how it behaves when we go to fire it. Squirt, data. Yes! Fires right up. Oh my God, this is so awesome. 
Wow, the car has never, ever started that quickly, cold or hot. I'm so happy I figured that out. And those of you that are having starting issues, check the power, the keyed on power while you're cranking. I didn't do that in the last episode in the playlist. I just assumed keyed on 12 volts was going to be there when I was cranking and it wasn't. Man, so if you're in the middle of that playlist, Next episode is installing the sensors, the O2 sensors, but the rest of you guys, thanks for hanging out. And if you have that issue of not starting quickly, check that white wire. Until next time, you guys know the drill. Subscribe and build them fast and drive them faster. See ya.